there, David again from ConcertBlogger.com. Uh, we have the great pleasure to be here with uh, T. Jardine from We Are The In Crowd. Um, they have a new album that's going to be coming out this winter um, with a video and a single in early December. So uh, she's here in New York and uh, stopped by to, uh, to talk with us. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> What do you what do you guys get going on now? What's what's your your latest with the band? Well, we just finished um, the new record, so we're all just anticipating the release, sitting home watching Netflix, just wondering when it's gonna come out. Because <laughs> we know, oh, I mean, we know when it's gonna come out, but you know, it's all just really exciting, and we're all really anxious to just have everybody listen to it. So it's good right now. Great. Relaxing before all the touring starts. Yeah, before everything starts, before the, the life goes crazy again yeah, after uh, absolutely. life on the road. Um, Flicks and Fritos on my couch. <laughs> not too much of that out on the my road. Best friends, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit on, on the tour bus, but even then, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, tell us about the band a little bit. How did you guys get together? What's, what's your history? Um, our band started um, through mutual friends within our area. We're from upstate New York in like the Poughkeepsie, New York area. Um, I'm from a little bit further west in um, a town called Liberty, and we all, um, I just ended up at the right place in the right time. I was in another band and I um, decided to play this battle of bands um, that we actually ended up winning. I don't know how, because we were really bad. Um, and this kid even, came even your worst is, is, is best. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. And this, this kid came up to me and was like, hey, um, I've been writing these songs. Do you want to check it out? And I was like, sure. And then we just ended up, we swapped screen names because that was still relevant. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and we started like writing songs over the internet. It was weird. Like, I'd record a part and like, it just started happening. And um, he's no longer in the band anymore, but um, that's sort of where the project started. And we find, we, you know, he knew the guys are in the band now. We sort of just kind of came together really quickly. This was all in about like two or three months, and um, yeah, and then we just decided to book our own tour. Once we had the whole band or most of the band together, we just booked our own tour and went for it with just, like no just. money. Yeah, we hardly made it back home. I remember sitting in Texas. We were like in Dallas or something, and I was like, we can't get home. Huh. So we just like. Hustle. I was like spray painting our own t-shirts and stuff. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to, you know, yeah. if you're going to make it in the music industry in today's world, you have to do it yourself. There's, yeah, it's you know, all, it's, it's, it's very, very much changed. Mm -hmm. You know, and even, you know, with the help of a label or anything else, I mean, it's not the way it used to be. And as, as helpful as that is, I mean, we soon after that tour signed with Hopeless. And, um, you know, obviously their support had helped us a lot, but... It is very much like you know DIY, and it's it's interesting. A lot of people think it just get, it just shows up out of nowhere, and everybody's just so lucky to be where they are. It's like oh. yeah, no, it's the the only luck is the luck that you Walmart make. Our parking lots are just yeah, those days are over. But my <laughs> God. Yeah, great. Well, you know that that just shows the progression of the band. You know, sure. mm -hmm. it's it's almost like you have to go through those tough times you have to, to. In, in order to grow as a band together. You know, yeah. and get it. In your stripes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. In the music industry, nobody gives you anything for free. Mm -hmm. um, it's very rare that you come out and you're just some superstar right off the bat. Right, and if they you, do, you it's you have always to like that one-hit wonder. And yeah, that. yeah, and then where are they? Dexy's Midnight Runners. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always my favorite because they're the Simpsons episode. It is so good. <laughs> um, so, um, what would you describe your sound as? I, I kind of get a little bit that it's a, a bunch of musical styles woven into a. It is. A tapestry. Have, it is, though. I mean, you're right with that. We all have, like, individually, we all have, like, a lot of different style as far as what we listen to. Um, so I was always, like, a huge pop fan growing up. That's what I listened to. But then my dad always had, like, uh, Simon Garfunkel and, and the Beatles, obviously, and even just Bob Marley. So, like, I grew up around so much different kind of music, different styles of music. So... Um, we just play what we like, but it is very melodic. We base things around melody mostly and lyrics. Um, those, that's like our main, our main thing there. Um, and just it's like melodic pop rock music. Now, how would you say you collaborate to to make songs? It said uh, I'd read somewhere about that you're five cooks in in the kitchen. Yeah, that's how not exactly I what happens. Somebody comes up with an idea, and it's so strange because. To us, that's so normal, but I've talked to almost every band we tour with, they're like, yeah, yeah, the two of them write all the songs, and, you know, we learn them, and, like, you know, we put our, our bit into it, but, like, we literally sit in a room and just, like, 
hit each other until a song comes out. Like, <laughs> and it's funny. It's I think it takes longer, but um, we're all really happy in the end. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll let we'll let each other like kind of just roll with an idea. Like, there's songs where, you know, I could technically say I mostly wrote, or he mostly wrote, or he mostly wrote, and um, in the end, it, it's just sort of like, you know, we split everything equally because you know, our opinions matter to each other as far as like what our our main product is. Mutual respect, mutual mm -hmm. musical respect. Yeah, it's tough because there's a difference between a democracy and and just like a well-oiled machine, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's really hard to find the balance between the two, which is strange. It should be just one, but it's it's hard. We figure it out though. But it works for you. You know, it makes yeah. it it makes your sound unique. I hope um, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is uh, the whole the whole point of it, right? Um, no, it's funny that you mentioned how um, when you originally got together, it was over the internet mm -hmm. and stuff. You have a, a song off the last album um, from a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, called uh, "Best Intentions." That uh, is the name of the song is "Rumor Mill," and it's it's all about. Um, why, don't, why don't you actually tell me the story? What it's about? Yeah, um, that song was. I think that was actually the last song we wrote on that record, um, and I remember. Uh, just as soon as the record was about to be done and we needed, we knew we were missing a song on it. We knew we needed something a little bit like more driving. Um, and just, I guess that sort of just happened. But the story behind Rumor Mill was, there was a ton of rumors on the internet about our band and how we got started and how there was like a huge financial push behind us or something crazy. And to hear people say that and believe it and just like, and just like, you know, jump on that bandwagon was so crazy because for us like I can't I can't prove how many hard times we've had just sitting in a sweaty van with a bunch of guys eating Chef Boyardee <laughs> like <laughs> you know it's like you can't you, it's hard to explain that to somebody that just has so much control over the internet you know it's hard it was hard to defend myself so we kind of just wrote about it and just like you know, did it. <laughs> yeah well it just it's it seems like that is especially meaningful and today's internet-based society where people it's can just amazing. say stuff without looking at you crazy. face to face and and just because it's been said exactly it's true yeah and and you know there's some guy in a and day after day I'll get tweets every day about some, some crazy thing like and it, it's just so funny I laugh it off now but I mean sometimes when it's something so personal like that like where you knew like we know we worked our butts off to get to where you know we are now we're not even Close not even where, where you're going to be. to be. We, you know, well, we're not where we want to be. That's for sure. And um, yeah, and to have somebody put that down is just like the most like insulting thing, especially a stranger. <laughs> yeah, stranger, someone you don't even know that doesn't know you exactly. Yeah. But uh, I think that you know, writing about it um, helps people realize that it, it isn't just them. You know, bullying is a very big thing now. Yeah, and that's the other thing. It's so relatable. Like, so I mean, I knew a lot of kids that still come to us after shows, and they're like. We're so happy you played Rumor Mill, that song reminds me of this, and you know, just to kind of like ignore that, and it's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. You have, you touch your fans, you know, just to have that, something that you went through touches them mm -hmm. is, well, that's is pretty the cool. that's idea with our songs, like it's obviously for us first, which I think every artist should write their songs for themselves first, because otherwise I think, I don't know who you're supposed to be doing it for, I mean, as far as like chasing a single or like trying to be this or that, but... Um, second, it should be obviously for the people that listen to it. You want it, it should be relatable. So you guys um, have really um, gotten close together through touring. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any favorite tour stories from uh, from out on the road? Anything? We just play really silly pranks pranks on each other because we we really are like siblings um, in the best and worst way. Like there's some times <laughs> where I just can only take so many like like you know guy armpit. <laughs> but private jokes, like I just, and sometimes I just kind of raise my hand, I'm like enough, <laughs> you know. Remember, it's, you have a girl in the, in the van here. Oh no, there's there's no filter on them, not at all. Um, sometimes it's funny though because you know I'm so used to them talking about that, and they'll start talking about it with other people on the tour, and they're like, hey, like, is it all right to like say that for her? They're like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. I'm like, nah, but it's not really. <laughs> um, uh, uh, cool. No, it's fun. We play a lot of pranks. Um, hiding fruit is a big one with us, like hiding um, bananas or oranges in your bunk. So like you go to bed, and, like there's just an apple like in your ear, 
that's, I don't know, we're strange people. That's cool, that's cool. <laughs> like siblings. Yeah, we're not, we don't do anything too like badass or anything. We're not, <laughs> not that we're not, bad. We're not that cool. How about, um, <laughs> so you got the new album coming out in December? Yeah. And uh, any any plans on touring or anything else? What else yeah, is going right, on coming right up? Yeah, right away. We want, we want to release the record and get right on the road, so that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing's announced yet, but I mean, it's it's a really good time for us. We haven't released anything in two years, and I think that it's really, it'll be a real, you know, really developing for us. Cool. This next record. Okay, my one last question that I uh, ask all my interviewees mm -hmm. um, is, what is something that your fans don't know about you that they might be surprised by? Oh, I love these questions because I actually write them down. If my, if my phone wasn't restoring every 10 minutes today, um, thanks to the <laughs> new iPhone, that's just so trustworthy. Um, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I write them down, but I gotta think of a few of them. Cause I usually, what happens is I get asked that and I go, I don't know. Oh, here's one. When I was a kid, um, my, my, my nanny, my dad's mother was a hairdresser. And um, like whenever we would stay with her and she would watch us, we would like basically play hairdressers. So she had like all these like mannequin heads and like <laughs> we just make them look crazy and put lipstick on their forehead. And, um, I remember, so she had like piles of magazines in her in her waiting area because the downstairs of her house was a salon and the upstairs was her house. And so we just hang out there all day while she worked. And like tons of magazines. So there's all these perfume cutout, you know, the things you can tear out, you can smell them. And so we thought that we were being like the like entrepreneurs and, and creating our own perfume factory by taking all of the perfumes, like all the samples, ripping them out and dunking them in a bowl of water. <laughs> okay. And making our own perfume. Making a whole a whole thing of perfume. It smelled terrible. It smelled <laughs> so bad. It smelled like the worst. So you were an entrepreneur from very young. Yes. Okay, so that's so that's one being, thing that they don't that people don't know about yes, you. Is that um <laughs> I thought that maybe one day I would create my own perfume. Maybe someday you will, you know? If, I hope, if it smells like that, I'll kill people. <laughs> well, maybe I'll get some professional help with uh, coming up with the right, uh, the right mixture. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Taylor. Um, this has been Taylor Jardine from We Are The In Crowd. And uh, look for their new album this December. And uh, check them out up on the road. Thank you very much for your time.